it is literally the Wild West. It is an absolutely appalling situation. How can I say that you're qualified to do these treatments after such a short spell? Social media is packed with aesthetic practitioners promoting their businesses. And more and more, companies are offering training courses, teaching students how to perform procedures like Botox and filler. But the area is almost completely unregulated. Completely unacceptable practice. It takes a considerable amount of time and practice to inject safely. I felt absolutely frightened to death. I can't offer this service to people when it's me that's got to pick up the pieces. Like most young women my age, I spend a lot of time scrolling through social media. But recently, I noticed my Explore pages were absolutely filled with videos of people getting dermal filler and Botox. And as I scrolled, I noticed just how many of these businesses offering these procedures also had their own training centres. Think about it as a non-surgical buckle fat pad removal, non-surgical cheek lift. But there are currently no laws restricting who can give these procedures and who can teach others how to do them. And while there are some great providers, others are offering training in Botox and filler that falls far below recommended standards. I've got in touch with a former nurse. Last year she went on a one-day Botox and filler training course, but she left feeling completely unprepared. She's asked us not to use her name, so we'll call her Paula. I felt worried and then I, I got home and I tried to sort of reflect back on the training and thinking about, well, how do you do this area? How do you inject it? To what dosage do you use? I felt absolutely frightened to death. And I thought, I can't go out there and like offer this service to people when it's me that's got to pick up the pieces when anything goes wrong because I haven't got anything to back me up. Paula's course was aimed at students with a background in healthcare. But she says that each person only had around 45 minutes to practice because of the size of the group. The course was run by a doctor. There was a um, cheek fillers lecturer that, that had my group told me that we shouldn't be really being taught that because it was classed more of an advanced technique, but they were teaching us anyway. So I only got to observe that, I never got to do it. Paula left with a certificate that said she was qualified to give invasive treatments that she had never fully practiced before. The course cost her £925. And Paula is not the only one. We've seen countless messages on social media of people discussing their poor training experiences. Students alleging that they were trained in a garden, that they didn't even get to inject on models before they left. And even students alleging that they were not taught how to deal with the potentially life-threatening complications that can result from these procedures. I attended an academy which was horrific and left out a load of vital information. The girls who qualified while we were there started teaching the classes and pretended they had loads of experience. It was embarrassing. So lovely to read this. I've had a really experience with the academy I paid a lot of money to. I felt totally unsupported since starting with them. So much so, I've left the course. The number of aesthetic training centres has grown significantly in recent years and social media is one of the main ways companies promote their services. Sky News analysed 100 Facebook business pages for these companies and found that nearly half had been set up since the beginning of 2020 and nearly three quarters had been created since the beginning of 2019. David Sines, who chairs the industry's voluntary regulator, says they've been receiving up to 20 complaints about poor training for the past two years. It takes a considerable amount of time and practice to inject safely, subcutaneously or intramuscularly, of course, but that cannot be done in the absence of not just technique, but a real knowledge of the potential risks. We asked him what every course ought to be providing as a minimum understanding of anatomy and physiology, infection control standards, injection techniques, product knowledge and complication management. It's appalling, absolutely appalling. If things go wrong and expectations aren't managed, then this can cause very deep wounding with regard to psychological and emotional trauma. So that's one big area that occurs. The other are physical symptoms and physical challenges. I mentioned the issue of vascular occlusion where lips, as we've seen, can be very swollen, the face can actually be distorted, but also it can lead to potential paralysis, muscular paralysis due to poor injection technique. So 
how easy is it to get on one of these courses? I contacted eight different training companies about their beginners courses in injectables. I was clear that I had no relevant experience whatsoever. Four of them offered me a place, provided that some online learning was completed beforehand. One told me I'd get an instant fast track to basic dermal filler and foundation fine lines and wrinkles. Another offered me the same, which could be completed in six days in total. All of the courses took under a week to complete. A parliamentary inquiry into the non-surgical cosmetic treatment industry is due to report soon. The group feels that the only solution is for the government to intervene. We need proper regulation, appropriate regulation. I'm not saying that we should regulate the whole industry out of existence because there's a lot of good people out there. There's mainly, it's an industry that is run by women for women um, on the whole. And this is um, providing a, a good opportunity for women to be able to employ other people and to own a business. But until that happens, they say it's unlikely the problem will go away. The consumer is facing the situation where Quite frankly, they could be in danger because somebody is messing about with their face, injecting them, um, maybe incorrectly, maybe correctly, but they're really putting themselves in danger as well. And they walk into a place, but someone's wearing a white coat, there's a certificate up on the wall, they feel at ease and they shouldn't. I think the only way really is to protect like the general public and protect like the practitioners because like if you do something wrong, you know, and your assurance uh, invalidates itself, then you are liable for what, what you've done.